Today on the DML News Podcast, we've got Trump on trial. We've got polls about Trump and Trump and Biden. We've also got this squad not knowing the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. No shock there. And a playbook for how to make illegal aliens nice and comfortable in your city. And then, of course, videos around the world showing you what's coming to America. This is a powerful show. It's Tuesday. It's May 28th. And it is all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word, and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is, is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and I thank you for joining me today. Across from me is Denny. On the controls is Ryan. Both of them my sons, both of them breathtakingly handsome, and actually as intelligent as intelligent comes. You must take after your mother. All right, with that being said, we have Donald J. Trump on trial, Dennis, in the kangaroo court. He is there. He is fighting for his life on something as ridiculous as uh, putting a expenditure to your lawyer as a legal expense. That is something that they want to put him in jail for for a very long time. We know that President Trump has already had to dish out $500 million, or will have to, it's under appeal, $500 million for basically putting an appraisal on his buildings, which were approved by insurance companies and banks who said we'd like to do business again. And of course, we have uh, Trump before that uh, having to dish out $95 million or somewhere around that for a lady who he never met, says he doesn't even know. And on top of that, she can't identify when it is that he sexually assaulted her, doesn't know what dress she was wearing, although the dress that she thinks she was wearing wasn't even manufactured back at that time. And this is just the ongoing onslaught against this man. And the reason being is because there are polls that show that Donald J. Trump is kicking Joe Biden's arse up and down the avenue. But maybe one of the most interesting things today about the courtroom, because what's happening right now is the final arguments are being had, the Biden-Harris uh, clown show decided that they were going to take to the streets of New York and hold like a little press conference. And we had the benefit of having Robert De Niro. You know Robert De Niro. You're talking to me. You're talking to me. No, I wouldn't talk to you, De Niro, you stupid ass. Play the video. Under Trump, this kind of government will perish from the earth. I don't mean to scare you. No, no, wait, maybe I do mean to scare you. If Trump returns to the White House, you can kiss these freedoms goodbye that we all take for granted. And elections, forget about it. That's over. That's done. If he gets in, I can tell you right now, he will never leave. He will never leave. You know that. He will never leave. Denny, what are people saying about De Niro being in New York? And what, what significance does he hold? Uh, the big significance this man holds is that Biden himself can't do it. So they got to recruit the Hollywood elites and the celebrities, kind of like how Clooney and uh, Julia Roberts are hosting that fundraiser. So, you know, De Niro, actually, I think he was in New York for a movie that he was just recently filming and he is a Biden shill through and through. He's been like that way for years. I think it's even more so that he just hates Trump that much that he's become a Biden shill. So I'm sure they just gave him the little phone call and he put on his little N95 mask and waltzed <laughs> down to the courtroom. Now, here's the great thing about this. I mean, when you go back to listen to what that knucklehead had to say, he said, if Trump, Trump wins, forget about elections, he will never leave. What is the precedent that he is following that on? Because, because if I remember correctly, Donald J. Trump absolutely 100% believes that the election had a lot of shenanigans in it. I will back him on that one. And yet he still, le he left. Yeah. He left. He's not in the White House anymore. So I don't know what the basis is for Robert De Niro's storytelling, his Hollywood storytelling, his fear mongering. But, he looks as stupid as Biden does on a daily basis. And you just brought something up very, very interesting. You know, over the weekend, we obviously celebrated Memorial Day. Some of us know what that means, but we'll get to that in a second. And the media absolutely annihilated Trump all weekend. It started with Eric. Eric, a few days before Memorial Day, put out a picture 
of the family and said, our family has given up everything to try to save America. Well, of course, they're going to come in and oh, so really? You gave up everything? You didn't give up everything? How do you destroy Memorial Day for all the people who gave their lives? What did you give? You gave nothing away. It was a metaphor. It was a metaphor. But you know what I didn't see, Dennis? Actually, let me roll back. What I did was, because I was writing the newsletter, the Great American Newsletter, which is taking off like a rocket ship, but I, I went into Google and typed, what is President Trump doing for Memorial Day? And all I got was feedback about how he is horrible and he's anti-veteran and he's anti I mean, it was just, oh, wow. So then one of the things was Eric Trump puts out disgusting, uh, disrespectful tweet. And that was the tweet. But you know what I didn't see? Because when I went and I did the Google search for what is President Biden doing on this day, everything was giving a speech. He's this, he's that. And of course, they slammed Trump a couple of times. You know what they didn't tell you? I have to, because of our job, I have signed on for email alerts from the Biden-Harris team. I have received emails all throughout the weekend. Not one of them, not one of them was honoring those who have fallen, the heroes who have fallen for our freedom. Instead, what I got on Memorial Day was enter a sweepstakes to meet George Clooney, Julia Roberts, Barack Obama, and me. Just dish in a couple of bucks. And I'm like, holy cow. It's funny. This is unbelievable. But wait, I think that actually breaks a law because to enter a sweepstakes, you shouldn't have to pay anything. And in this particular case, the way you entered the sweepstakes was if you made a donation. Yeah. I don't even think the buy. I mean, nobody looked this up in the RNC. I should send this to the RNC. So that was the way that you'd wind up, unless I read it wrong. But nonetheless, that was the email that I got on Memorial Day. Nothing about all the fallen heroes. Oh, I mean, I got some other ones, but related to a different George, uh, such as George Floyd and his anniversary death. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, I can't forget that. I've been, I, if anything, it's almost actually disgusting how much I have seen that in the last few days of like the recycling of that. It's his four year anniversary since, uh, you know, his death. I did the whole newsletter on that thing over the weekend. Biden has still to this day, never put anything out about Lake and Riley no. who died at the hands of one of the illegal aliens that Joe Biden has led into this country. But when it came to the anniversary of that druggy criminal, wind up dying. By the way, his autopsy is all over Twitter. Yeah. Okay. And it said he had extreme levels of fentanyl in his system and that there was no evidence of any life threatening or life ending sort of injury. So in other words, it wasn't at the hand of a cop that killed him. It was the fentanyl overdosing or poisoning, if you will. And, but yet there's a guy sitting in jail right now because he took somebody who had been in jail eight different times from, I think, 1996 to 2004. Then in 2007, was uh, arrested for holding up what was reportedly a pregnant woman, sticking a gun to her stomach, pretending he was from the water authority to steal money so this way he could go buy drugs. This is the guy that Joe Biden is writing an essay for yep. about how he is a civil rights movement uh, hero <laughs> and that... Uh, we should all love and adore him as much as those who did. And apparently he's worthy of getting a Hollywood film because now there's, I, I put that in for this morning's newsletter. Uh, his 10-year-old daughter and their family are financing and producing a biopic on his life. So, Well, no uh, doubt they got the money to do it, baby. Yes. Yeah. They got, the, the best thing that George Floyd ever gave his family was his death because they finally got some money. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Well, that's, that's the history of George Floyd getting money from the government, well, getting really, money from yeah. somebody else, never earning it. We know the Democrats love to rewrite history. It's just, you'd think that they would wait a little more than four years to try and rewrite this one, but here they are, you know. Going Appreciate back it. to the Trump trial here for a second, you put up a poll today on uh, your website, your brand new website, which I love, which the DML News app uh, connects to, which is true.news, true.news. You put up a poll that asks whether or not Trump will be found innocent or guilty in this trial. So far, what are, what are the uh, numbers yes. look like? Uh, right now, we have 51% saying no. No what? No, as in he will uh, not be found guilty. So he'll be innocent? Yeah. 
Okay, he'll be found innocent. As for those who think he will be found guilty, there are 27% saying yes. Mm -hmm. Then you have 21% saying unsure. But just to even clarify that more, even those that think that he might be found guilty believe it's going to be because everything's fixed and that it's not that there was actually a crime committed. In fact, reading through the comments on the website, a lot of people want to reiterate that there is no crime here. It's that if he's found guilty, it's because the jury is biased or because this was all fixed to have Biden's political opponent locked up before the election. I, look, I, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. The key uh, to Trump coming out of this without um, having to spend time in jail or be found guilty is we just need one juror to recognize that there is a lot of money to be made by being the one person who said, I'm not putting this man in jail. He's innocent. That will be somebody who will be recognized as a hero. I don't know if there is somebody on that jury as smart as it requ as that requires, that kind of thinking, because they all basically said they read the New York Times, listen to CNN, and uh, you know do their Google searches for their news. So it's it's it, it's like you know, it's like trying to teach a fish how to fly, and I don't know if it's a possible thing. But we will uh, stay tuned and see. The shame of this all is that America right now is in its worst stance I've ever witnessed in all my 55 years come August. And I think there's a lot of people who agree with us. We uh, were citing a poll that ran over the weekend on the Great American Newsletter this morning. Why don't you give an indication of what these polls are saying in terms of Trump versus Biden. And it's very important to say, as Dennis reads you these numbers, keep in mind this, that these very same polls last year, this time, Biden was winning in each and every one of those polls. Go ahead. Yeah, no, well, now, based on a lot of these different polls, uh, like you just said, it was Biden last year, but now... You're seeing Trump with, like, there's one uh, from the Harris poll. He's got an eight-point lead over Biden. Echelon Insights, five-point lead over Biden. YouGov, uh, a, like a 1.5 lead over Biden. Even the 538 uh, poll through ABC News uh, I did in my morning briefing the last two months, you know, and this is national averaging, he's had basically a 1.5 to 2-point lead over Biden, and that's including, you know, the big blue states too. And then when you look at the swing states, he's starting to lead in pretty much each one of them. You know, it's it's all leaning towards Trump. And yet we have to worry about him possibly being put behind bars for four years if he's found guilty at this trial. Guilty of no crime. Guilty of no crime. Guilty of no crime. And I think it's just a testament to that. You know, he is I mean, his Bronx rally, I still think is just one of the most astounding rallies to ever be held. You know, it's deep blue. Democrat run city, and yet he is pulling out like ev everyone to his to his favor. I'm glad glad you said that. I, I I wrote this in the in the Great American Newsletter over the weekend that that was the greatest rally I've ever seen politically. And the reason being is not the biggest by any means. There's probably, I mean, the Trump campaign is always going to tell you the number is bigger than it is. But there was probably a good five to 10, 10,000 people there. They said twenty five thousand people. It was not twenty five thousand people. But 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 that's what Trump always does. Um, but I, still, when you grab five to 10,000 people or even 25,000 people, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, uh, to a rally, usually the sea of red hats you see are primarily white people and mostly people who are 40 and up. In this particular rally, I have never seen so much diversity in my entire life. I was just going to say, yeah. it, it defeats a big Democrat narrative, that rally in particular, which is the diversity narrative. To your point, it's always... You know, the older white people attending Trump rallies, that is ser severely not the case. So, so I had a conversation over the weekend with some friends. We had a uh, we, dinner, actually, on um, Memorial Day and uh, the night before. And we were talking about the election and the fears of Trump not winning. And we all said that if he didn't win, it was going to be because there's cheating going on. There's no doubt. These polls are just so rock solid Joe Biden is a walking disaster. And, you know, even Bill Maher, we, I think we covered this last week. Bill Maher, who is a, you know, a hardened liberal, said, when you look at Joe Biden, he presents as old. 
When you look at uh, Trump, he does not. So we were talking about uh, how to prove that the last election may have been subject to shenanigans. And I'm talking like this for the people on Facebook so the AI system doesn't pick up on it. But one of the things that I found very interesting was that in the Bronx, we talked about this last time, that it has been 100 years since, the, uh, since a Republican won the Bronx uh, in a presidential election, right? I mean, Reagan went and visited, but he didn't win the Bronx. He won New York, but he didn't win the Bronx. The Bronx for 100 years has basically voted for the Democrat candidate for president. However, if you look at 2016, Trump pulled 10% of the vote in the Bronx, but in 2020, pulled in nearly 18% from the Bronx. So how is it that this guy nearly doubles his, his take in the Bronx, and yet he lost the election on a, on, on a national basis? You're talking about the most liberal place in New York, and he almost doubled his vote tally. You're going to tell, I mean, in terms of support, you're going to tell me he didn't win Arizona? You're going to tell me he didn't win Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania? There's absolutely no way you will ever get me to believe that. And if you look at everything else that we've dealt with over the last couple of years, be it the things that Obama tried to lie to us about, and we found out that it was a lie. I'm talking about Benghazi, Obamacare, Fast and Furious. You take a look at what they did to Trump with the whole thing with you know, Russia collusion. Turned out to be an absolute lie. Look what they did with the COVID shots. You weren't going to get sick. Turned out to be a lie. Look what's happening now with where it is that we said that it, it, it stemmed from and where it came from. They told us that it was no way it was, came from Wuhan. Look what's happening now. We're finding out the truth. We see Anthony Fauci deleting emails. When is it going to be? What point in time is it going to be that we're finally going to learn that the 2020 election and the results that came thereafter were not authentic? When's that coming out? You think it's going to come out in the next year, next four years? When? Uh, I don't want to be pessimistic. I mean, I think in my lifetime, I get a little skeptical if, 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 if for those that are older. Uh, I, it really does seem like it's going to be one of those things 20, 30 years later, there's an admission that, you know, things weren't adding up. And one thing I've noticed, because, uh, you know, obviously with doing this, I'm always watching, uh, on a lot of liberal networks, mainstream media networks now, they're trying to get a lot of Republican congressmen with the gotcha question of, will you accept the election results, you know, how they play out? Right. And it's like, well, you know, it, it, you're making it such a black and white question when the truth is, uh, there's not a lot of faith in our election system right now, so I don't think we should be taking anything as a face value. We should be looking into deep of you know these mail-in ballots, these issues with the uh, you know the tabulation uh, um, booths, and yet they just want you to you know get the soundbite of like uh, I won't accept it because then you're going to be you know called a traitor, or you will accept it and then you can't question anything. Well, it's uh, well, I'll take what you're saying a step further. It, just like it was in 2020, it concerns me. Why are you asking that question? Do you have a plan in place already? Do you know something I don't know? Why are you asking me if I'm going to accept something that hasn't even happened yet? And they always just ask, you know, whether it's uh, Tim Scott or Marco Rubio, it's always a Republican. Or uh, Caitlin Collins just did it to Ted Cruz. Yeah. They're always doing it towards, you know, a Republican congressman. Right. You never get Nancy Pelosi asking the question. No. You never get Joe Biden asked the question. Harris has never asked the question. Never, ever, ever. It's always the Republican. And the question has to be, why are you asking that question? Now, speaking of radical Democrats and what they do and what they can't do, we have two of the squad members who don't know the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. And for those of you who are sitting back and you don't understand, although I don't think that's anybody in our crowd, let me just reiterate, Memorial Day is a time when we are supposed to reflect and give praise and thanks to those who gave their lives in the military. I actually did a whole thing on Sunday. Uh, I'm sorry, on Monday. I did it yesterday on the uh, Great American Newsletter about the origins of Memorial Day. And it actually started uh, not long after the Civil War. It was called um, Decoration Day. And what they would do is they would decorate the um, graveyards and, uh, and just shower them all with flowers. 
And then that eventually, over the course of time, spread into Memorial Day. And in 1971, it was actually made an official holiday here in the United States. Veterans Day Mm -hmm. is the day where we say to people who served but who are still alive, thank you very much for your service. Yes. Much different. One person's alive and the other one's dead. They're also at like two different points of the year, too. Absolutely. (laughs) One's in the fall and one's in the spring. Yes. Why don't you, and Ryan will put it up on the screen, show Ilan Omar and Corey Bush's interpretation of what Memorial Day is all about. Yeah, so uh, Omar wrote, on Memorial Day, we honor the heroic men and women who served our country. We owe them more than our gratitude. They have more than earned access to quality mental health services, job opportunities, housing assistance, and the benefits we promised. Uh, Bush then wrote, this Memorial Day and every day, we honor our veterans in St. Louis. We must invest in universal health care, affordable housing, comprehensive mental health services, and educational and economic opportunities for our veterans as we work to build a world free of war and violence. And the reason we have to show it to you guys is because you can't look it up because they deleted it. They deleted it. They deleted both. Clearly their intern, because there's no way it was either of the two of them, uh, pulled out their uh, drafted Veterans Day tweet and posted it incorrectly on Memorial Day. Well, that said... um I'm not going to blame it on interns. I'm going to blame it on the two of them. I think that they absolutely did it because I don't think they understand what's going on in the country. Ilan Omar uh, does not care about this country. She cares about taking out the Muslim Brotherhood's uh, doctrine and having it fully implemented, which basically is take America over from within. And when you, when you, the only person who can probably respect that kind of tweet is Joe Biden because Joe Biden goes to press conferences and calls upon dead people who don't exist. He calls them up to the stage. They don't exist. So now what they want out of Omar, what Omar wants and what Corey wants is they want to give mental health services to people who are dead, <laughs> people who uh, stormed the beach in Normandy. Uh, if you want a health service, just ring the bell of Elon Omar. And that's the, that's the deal that we're dealing with here. And that's why when Dennis reads the polls, uh, that's why people want Trump back, no matter what color, no matter what race, because the country is falling apart at such a rapid pace that is it is absolutely unrecognizable. And we're going to get into that right now. There is, and this is the big story of, uh, of our podcast today, there is a playbook for newcomers, which is a sexy word to say, illegal aliens. There is now a playbook that is designed by a mayor who was just last month screaming at the top of his lungs to the Biden administration and to the state of Texas and everybody else that Denver could no longer accept illegal aliens. In fact, they were going to start to fine the bus companies for dropping off illegals in his city. He was going to close down police departments and, and all different jobs so he can pay for the illegal aliens. They spent tens of millions of dollars of putting illegal aliens into hotels only later then to kick them out and ship them out. We are going to tell you about this playbook and the dangerous parts of it because the playbook isn't for the people of Denver. The playbook is now about how to make your city a welcoming place for illegal aliens, how to make it an oasis for those who have no documentation how it is that you get the American citizen to pay for all of it, what you're going to give them, how you're going to go about it, a mapping, a actual flow chart of how to do it, housing, jobs, Eng- uh, English as a second language services. I mean, the whole thing goes on. Every single family gets a caseworker. We're going to go into this. And now it's published for other cities to follow. And this was the crux of my Great American Newsletter this morning, my big DML report. However, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show videos, we're going to show videos of what it looks like in your country when you allow what Denver is talking about to happen. We are going to show you videos from around the world, including an asylum seeker walking up to a young white girl sitting on a bench waiting for a bus. He rips out his you-know-what and starts urinating on the back of her neck while he's filming it on a live. And she jumps up. 
I can't show you these videos on YouTube or on Facebook because they'll kick me off permanently. It goes against their policies to show the truth. So here's the deal. For those of you on YouTube and those of you on Facebook, please listen to me very, very closely. A, we have a thing called the Great American Newsletter. It is the fastest growing newsletter that I've ever seen in my life. We have more, there's not a single person that said, ah, you know, I don't know, I'm not crazy about it. People are raving about it. You can go to greatagain.squarespace, you spell that out, S-Q-U-A-R-E-S-P-A-C-E.com. That is greatagain.squarespace.com. And the greatest way I could explain this to you is, your every single morning gives you everything you know. You will laugh, you will cry, but at the end of the day, you will be the most informed person in the world. Then the next iteration of that is you get the DML News app. We'll have you all day long with all the news you need. And then if you want, you join Team DML, and Team DML gives you the full show in video, so this way you never miss the most important things that we want to show that we can't give to you on Facebook and on YouTube. So with that being said, we have to say goodbye to you now, and we're going to go over to Team DML, and we're going to look at this playbook, and we're going to show the videos. So don't forget, once more time, greatagain.squarespace.com for the newsletter, and download the DML News app. Take a look at teamdml.com, both on a URL, or if you get the app, it's tab five, interact right there. You can become a member for as little as $2.50 per month, and you can keep us in business. That's it for us on YouTube and Facebook. Now we go over exclusively to Team DML. Get the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast every day by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And download the DML News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and Team DML.